This is the Jeff Orovitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. Let's get a legislative update from Senator Wendy Rogers. Bunch of election integrity bills down there at the Capitol. Another hour of the show starts now. All right, we're going to talk with Senator Wendy Rogers of Legislative District 6 in just a second, so hold tight for that. Uh, Please help me out for tomorrow's show. I want you to be part of it. Uh, Typically, Wednesday is open line Wednesday, but tomorrow and all this week, I am remote. I'm not in my Flagstaff studio, so taking those live listener comments is is very challenging. I I can kind of finagle and make it happen, but when I'm not in the studio, it's really tough. So uh, what I'd rather do is an open comment Wednesday tomorrow, and you may have some comments on my next guest, Senator Wendy Rogers. I'd like to hear from you, though. Go ahead and send your email comments in right now. Get them in today, please. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com talk with jeff at icloud.com you can also leave your comments on the just wireless listener line uh, really easy to do just leave those comments there uh, 877-971-3971 one more time 877-971-3971 all right let's welcome back to the program she represents legislative district six senator wendy rogers senator how you doing today uh, it's uh, great to be with you jeff talking to you uh, from the swamp yeah. <laughs> keeping my head above water here and uh, we're doing we're doing so much down here I think people would be proud I was home this past weekend in Flagstaff uh, had a great meeting Coconino County Republicans for example had uh, its biggest turnout ever we had over 60 people at the day's end uh, just hungry for, wow. for what's going on and then I spoke uh, Friday night to uh uh, our huge Sedona group stand with Trump, which meets, I think, every other Friday at the Elks Lodge, if not more often. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm new, uh, but in a way that's been kind of, um, a good thing because I'm a fresh set of eyes, uh, at the legislature. I ask a lot of questions. I've submitted numerous bills, uh, 30, 3030 bills, uh, to be exact, uh, many of which are still um, wending their way through the uh, legislature. So I can talk today about an election integrity, some of uh, the more noteworthy bills that are underway. Yeah, let's, uh, let's wanted- do that. Let's do that. And that's, I mean, you're getting into uh, March, and as we get into April, it starts moving fast, but election integrity is still a huge concern for people. So what, what, do, you, what do you got going on as far as, I, I assume there's a multitude of bills, but what are you focusing on there? Yeah, and and to your point, it's really upon the shoulders of the state Senate in particular right now uh, in our state. I have calls from all over the country uh, that come into my office and uh, asking what is Arizona doing in particular? What is Wendy Rogers doing? Uh, We have a huge Twitter and Facebook following uh, nationally, and they know that this is on the shoulders of state legislatures in particular uh, Arizona, and in my case, uh, the state Senate. A couple, well, more than a few of my favorite sort of election integrity bills. And just so everyone understands, these have passed the state Senate. In other words, I've pressed the green button and been uh, 16 Republican senators over 14 Democrat senators, 16 to 14, has typically been uh, the vote breakdown on these election integrity bills. Of course, the hue and the cry across the aisle is, oh, you're trying to overturn uh, the election. No, we are restoring election integrity uh, because of so many thousands of calls and affidavits and uh, verified claims of corruption and fraud uh, throughout. So, for example, SDR 1034, uh, that we passed that. That will allow us as a legislature to correct an initiative or a referendum that was deemed unconstitutional by uh, Arizona courts or the U.S. courts, namely Prop 208, the uh, Red for Ed initiative. That is now uh, facing the Arizona Supreme Court. If the Arizona Supreme Court deems that a flawed or, you know, legally unconstitutional, now our bill, which is voted on in the state Senate and which will go over to the House and hopefully ultimately uh, uh, signed off by the governor would give us the ability to overturn that proposition 
because the courts found it flawed. Another one. And hang on, uh, Senator Rogers, that's the uh, that's the wealth tax bill, correct? Basically, okay. yes. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and this was a 16-14 vote. I'm the uh, vice chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and I, I see a lot coming through there. Um, the chairman, who's interestingly my office mate, uh, Senator Warren Peterson from the East uh, Valley of Maricopa County, uh, has been a stalwart uh, conservative champion of several of these bills, as have been other uh, great conservative senators. I sit in the second to the last row in the back, and I'm surrounded by some real talent, uh, in particular Senator uh, Sonny Borelli from Havasu, yeah, uh, yeah. Senator David Gowan from Sierra Vista, both fine uh, rural uh, state senators who sort of guide me uh, when I need help, and that's no, those Very are good, those, those are good folks. Uh, Warren Peters, Senator Warren Peterson, who was the former uh, majority leader of the House, he's been on the program many times. And Senator Gowan was instrumental in helping bring the veterans home to Northern Arizona when he was Speaker of the House. So uh, it, it's good yeah. to have those those folks around you. Okay, so the, the that election integrity okay. bill. What's what's some right. of the other and ones? Then, yeah, so Senate Bill seventeen thirteen, which requires an affidavit, uh, date of birth, and voter ID for all early. Ballot imagine request. that imagine that yes. right <laughs> uh and then my own bill i had a uh, taking care of seniors and the developmentally disabled bill uh which will require more inspections and more scrutiny on these uh homes which i'm upholding my promise to seniors with uh another bill senate bill 1652 which this was a real uh food fight on the floor you got a lot if all of you want to watch some drama Tune in online to the floor session uh, Monday through Thursday. My husband watches it just for entertainment. Yeah, we, uh, we all need more that. drama, right, Senator? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, this Senate Bill 1652 uh, funds the Attorney General uh, $1 million to investigate all these election integrity uh, infractions. And so, of course, I mean, we want the Attorney General investigating, and he needs money to do that. Another bill... Uh, that I got through the Senate was uh, 1362, which is what we call the student conscience bill. So there was never a provision until hopefully soon, whereby a student, a medical student or a nursing student who doesn't want to participate in an abortion can uh, withdraw and not have to participate. Uh, another bill, uh, 1613, says all election equipment should be made in the USA. You know, that's a no-brainer okay. also. Um, 1793 establishes a database of deceased voters. In other words, let's get dead voters off the roll. Um, SCR 1027. SCR is a Senate concurrent resolution. In other words, if we vote it through the Senate, the House, and the governor signs it, then it goes to the ballot. And uh, so this SCR is uh, property tax relief. This was another one of my bills uh, to give property tax relief to 100% disabled veterans. Huge okay. uh, bill. Yeah, that'd be a good uh, one. A lot, lot of states have it. Uh, this is to uphold my uh, campaign promises to veterans. And then another one of my bills, 1382, uh, puts firearms and ammunition stores as essential businesses during an emergency. Again, uh, I had to argue tooth and nail against the Democrats. It's a um, absolute requirement that we have these stores become a be considered essential businesses during an emergency. So that's upholding my promise on the Second Amendment. Um, here's and we see one. that, uh, uh, Senator, um, we see that under attack this week. With and, and Congressman Biggs, Congressman Gosar were on last week. We were talking about all the bills that are running through Congress right now, uh, anti-Second Amendment bills. They're stacking up. And we have to protect our Second Amendment rights uh, here in Arizona. And interestingly, you know, uh, the left has a target on my back. I don't know if all of you noticed, but um, they get triggered just daily by what I tweet and what I put on my Facebook. And uh, they really badgered me two weekends ago when I attended the Oath Keepers meeting in Cottonwood, which is basically a preparedness group 
that, you know, talked about all different kinds of techniques to be prepared. And so they badgered me about that. And I just doubled down and I told them, oh, Oath Keeper, now I'm a lifetime member. Thank you very much. You know, and I joined to become a lifetime member. We are, we cannot uh, back down. We cannot give an inch. Uh, we are under constant assault as uh, conservatives, especially as a state. Again, everybody needs to realize that in the state Senate, we have a very slim majority. Thank you again for electing me. Uh, we have a 16, 14 uh, majority, uh, largely due to our victory here in LD6 and uh, concurrently over in the House. Thirty-one twenty-nine. Yeah, it's so we, super close. We really yeah. have to stay uh, consolidated. Yeah. And so, uh, one of my other favorite bills uh, was SB twelve forty-one, which wasn't my bill, but of course I voted for it, which ensures all voting machines provide a paper receipt. What a concept, you know, paper. And then uh, finally, a couple of other favorites of mine. SB 1240, which forces the counting to be done by precinct, not by county, which is where the shenanigans occur. So it needs to be done by precinct. And uh, there's my final favorite one. I have a whole few. Yeah, you have a lot of favorites. (laughs) Yeah. um, But I have uh, this other one I like, SB 1084, which forces an automatic termination of the state of emergency after 90 days. Oh, okay, Unless so sim- similar to um, Senator Michelle Eugenie Rita was on the program recently trying to change that as well. Is it similar She's to... great. Yes, it's okay. similar to that. In fact, that may have been her bill. She sits on my right side, which is, of course, sort of a great symbolic uh, place to sit. Yeah. Uh, we're on the right side of the, uh, of the floor and has been a great friend, a great sort of uh, help to me. She's a she's a policy expert on governance, and she's head of the government committee. She's also a very shrewd strategist, and uh, she and I have stood sh- literally shoulder to shoulder on a couple of uh, uh, contentious issues that we had to uh, stand united on. I, I have seconded her motion. Yeah, it's and, a, uh, it's a good did, bill she, because there shouldn't be an yeah. emergency for a year. I mean, this is out of hand. And, and the, the thing I like about the bill there to it, basically it, 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 you have to go to the legislature to reaffirm any kind of emergency. It should be shorter term. And if it gets through the House, then it, it goes to the voters of the state. So the governor can't veto this thing. This thing would actually have to go out. And basically, you can't have this long emergency. So I, I think that's a good one. Well, Senator, and, and folks talking with Senator Wendy Rogers, and this is really timely, Senator, because uh, tomorrow on the program, I'm talking with a, a guest who's really been fighting against this HR1. And this is would really federalize our elections. And he's going to tell us all about what What's going on there? They're really fighting against this HR one, which basically would take everything you're talking about and excited about, uh, Senator, and federalize our elections. Forget about showing an ID when you go to vote. You got to show an ID to to get into the Capitol. You got to show an ID to fly. You got to show an ID for this and that, but not to vote. So you're trying really hard to uh, make sure that the elections have integrity and that when we go to vote in 22, we're sure of the results. But what's going on? I haven't heard much about Maricopa County. The Board of Supervisors just kind of flouted the order that they had to turn over the data. What's What's the latest there? Well, that, that's a great question, and I kind of had to go to school on some of this myself. As I said, I, I office with none other than the uh, Judiciary uh, Committee chair, and he explained it to me as, uh, Wendy, the big thing right now, and this was a couple of days ago when we spoke, he and I, uh, he says his location. We have to have the ballots looked at and examined at the county, not at the Senate so that there will be no accusations of uh, impropriety. So we have to do it at the Senate. And then I, I cornered uh, President Karen Fan, of course, who is our Senate president and uh, represents the rural district right next door to ours, uh, Prescott and so forth. And she explained it to me. She said, okay, let me lay it out for you, Wendy. There is no uh, one company that can do an audit. This is sort of, and she's a businesswoman, as am I. She said, this is sort of like hiring a, a prime contractor and then making sure that he or she, I'll say generically he, uh, 
Massachusetts expert under him who can investigate these various aspects. She said, for example, I mean, you hear uh, good uh, uh, requests from from the population like Steve Bannon and the Federal Election Commission and all these different um, stakeholders, if you will, that, that want to make sure that we do this right. But she said there are several pieces involved. There are the machines, for example. Okay, we have to look at how they're calibrated, uh, how, how they're regulated. Uh, there are experts who deal with hand counting of ballots. She said uh, Ken Bennett is involved in helping her get say, for example, 100 volunteers uh, who can eventually recount the ballots. Well, they have to be nonpartisan. You can't just have all 100 be uh, Republican yeah, or all yeah. 100 be Democrat. They have to be independent. So she said they have to be vetted. Well, you have to find an expert who can vet them properly. And she said you can bet your bottom dollar that everything will be challenged in court. So you have to be able to withstand uh, every possible permutation of of challenge. Uh, who did you use? Uh, did you break the chain of custody? All these kinds of questions. She said uh, it is probably going to take her, uh, you know, maybe another couple of weeks before we even assemble this cast of experts, which she said involve about five different areas of scrutiny. And um, we have to talk about security at the location, at the county. We have to uh, figure out access. Uh, and so this is a very involved situation. I told her, I said, I'm going home this weekend, President Stan. I need to be able to answer the mail here. Where are you in terms of assembling this team that's going to do this audit? And she looked at me. She said, you have no idea how uh, involved and how many nuances there are there is no one company that can do this yeah and so i just i want to assure everyone that this is a top priority if you have a senate president who is a businesswoman a shrewd uh businesswoman thank goodness we have someone in leadership who has this kind of background who knows how to separate the wheat from the chaff who knows how to hire and uh scrutinize uh and determine who is best suited to do this. This is not a one-size-fits-all kind of uh, endeavor. Bottom line, no, it's underway. And, uh, I mean, you're not talking about overturning the election. You're talking about ensuring voter integrity going forward. Um, all right, Se- Senator Rogers, let's do this. I, I, I got to take a quick break, but let's come back and just hit on the border crisis real quick and what's going on down there. Uh, and, folks, if you got a comment, love to hear from you. Go ahead and send an email, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. That's talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. More with Senator Wendy Rogers. Hang tight. Back in a minute. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, welcome back. Uh, talking with Senator Wendy Rogers of Legislative District 6 and a host of bills down there, many having to do with election integrity and working their way through the process so we can maybe be sure of things in 2022. Uh, Senator Rogers, something we're really unsure about right now is what's going on down at the border. I've spoken to lots of folks on this issue. It's a crisis down there, and, and President Biden, it, fingers are pointing to him, given these assurances that, hey, come on. And so people are coming to the border and through the border. What's going on? Uh, it, it's incredible. I just got off the phone with uh, my dear friend, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who's monitoring uh, the situation closely as well. Um, we had a lot of questions on this for me to answer this past weekend, and a uh, uh, memo was prepared by our Senate public relations folks. I steered them to uh, Mayor uh, Doug Nichols in Yuma to talk to him because I know him. And these are some of the uh, gleanings from that research. So the biggest change in concern is the end of the uh, quote-unquote remain in Mexico policy that the Trump administration had. And that policy, of course, meant that migrants attempting to gain asylum in the U.S. Uh, would be held in Mexico while they waited for immigration court hearings. And now 
uh, they're being allowed into the U.S. and then released. And then Mayor Doug Nichols, who, by the way, a lot of people are incredulous when they hear this. That's a part-time job, okay? The mayor of, of Yuma is an engineer <laughs> and owns his own civil engineering firm. So this poor guy is just uh, uh, inundated with, with issues down there. He's very concerned. We talked to him. Our staff did. He's very concerned about the impact that this is having on his community. Yeah. Uh, as of last week, when they put this together for me, more than 500 migrants uh, were released at bus stops in Yuma. He says Yuma doesn't have the resources to house, feed, or or provide any resources uh, to this larger number of migrants. There is a, a no nonprofit system in Yuma to provide shelter. One temporary shelter but it was closed last year. He says they should not be releasing migrants into small communities that aren't set up to deal with it. He met uh, with the White House last week. He explained that if these releases are going to happen, they should be in Phoenix or Tucson uh, where they have shelters because he wants to see the federal government not just re-examine the policy but also provide funding. And so the White House did say that the majority of migrants Uh, continue to be subjected to Title 42, which is the public health rule that allows U.S. border officials to immediately expel migrants detained at the border to curb the spread of COVID. I don't see that happening. Mm. Uh, The numbers of migrant children have just exploded. And this, as of a week ago, this memo says over the past three weeks, an average of 435 unaccompanied children have come through daily daily. Hmm. And the data points show that they're staying in facilities uh, for 107 hours average, which is longer than the 72 hours permitted by law. Uh, It's pretty clear that the Biden administration does not have a handle on this. Um, The White House press secretary doesn't even acknowledge it as a crisis. And uh, yeah, if it was Trump, if if it was Trump, you know, they'd be the media be all over this. What can the can the state do anything, Senator, as far as the governor? Here's the intriguing um, thing that I'd like to see move forward. Texas, for example, has uh, and they only meet every other year, interestingly, uh, but they've put through a bill to uh, continue to be able to build the border wall. Uh, and have the state of Texas pay for it and then get reimbursed by the federal government. I would love to see uh, Arizona um, assert that kind of move. And so we're, you know, we're looking into that. That's that's a very, very uh, wonderful thing that if we could uh, get that going. And so um, I'm going to be looking into that. Um, there are some real concerns in uh, leadership in ICE of what's happening and how things could get worse. I mean, they're reportedly being told to end uh, contracts for detention and move migrants to camps typically used to house uh, oil field workers. Now, I also understand, Mm. however, from my uh, colleague, Senator Sonny Borelli, who's, by the way, not only a rural senator as I am, uh, but also a retired military uh, uh, veteran as I am, and he has told me that the contracts to repair the wall uh, are still in force. And so that's good. Uh, and, and so, you know, and of course, you don't read you about that. You can keep that. it going. Yeah, you can keep it going. But yeah. you're, you're, the bill that Texas was doing, you'd like to see here in Arizona, which is, hey, Texas is going to complete the wall themselves and send the, the feds the bill basically to get reimbursed. We'll see if they actually get reimbursed. But uh, they're taking the matters into their own hands because the, the feds, once again, post-Trump, and we dealt with this pre-Trump, uh, failing on the border. One of their one of the things they sh- they're doing everything else, Senator Rogers. They're 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 doing every other little project in the world and things we don't even want them to do, but they're failing on the basics. Yes, and it's it's left up to strong governors, as you see in Florida and Texas mm-hmm. and state legislatures. Uh, you know what is it said in the Bible? But for such a time as this, uh, to Queen Esther, I feel called in this time of life, uh, by the real and true uh, realization that state legislatures are, um, everyone is going to depend on state legislatures, especially Arizona. Um, I have in-laws from Michigan, my 
husband's uh, family calling weekly. What is Wendy doing in Arizona? We're looking at Arizona. All eyes are on Arizona. Just talked to uh, someone who supports me from uh, Louisiana yesterday, and uh, we had a long talk, and he looks to Arizona. So many people across the country are looking to us to see that we get these election integrity bills through, that we uh, bear down on the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, and that we do something about the border, because we are at ground zero, folks. And I encourage you to please follow my day-to-day update on my Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com slash Wendy Rogers Arizona, uh, twitter.com slash Wendy Rogers AZ. And if you say to me, well, Senator Rogers, why are you still on Facebook and Twitter? And my answer is, I will stay on there as long as I can until they kick me off. (laughs) We, (laughs) We have to use every means available to get the truth out. And WendyRogers.org is my regular website. Uh, you can call me at the Capitol. You can email me. We answer every phone call. I can't say we are able to answer every email. I'm inundated with hundreds of emails a day. We literally get calls to the uh, state senate office of mine, my particular phone number, from all over the country every day. I'm not kidding. My assistant takes calls from Texas. California, Mississippi, what's Arizona doing? What is Senator Rogers doing? And he reassures them, runs them through whatever area of election integrity that they're interested in. He is on the phone all day with people who call in. We are also uh, absolutely adamant in helping people constituent services wise. We've been able to get people their uh, paychecks, uh, their refunds for, for DMV, um, retirement, uh, Purple Heart, rather, license place. Just had one of our veteran uh, constituents call in, didn't get service from any other part of the state government. You call my office, you get service, okay? okay. That's the way we That's are. That's good. That's how it should be. And um, finishing off here with this, Senator Rogers, I think you're right on the legislatures being that voice and that backstop against the feds and the growing uh, look what's going on nationally, how the power of the feds continue to grow year after year. And if things keep going the way they're going, people are going to be relying on their lo- I count legislatures as your local government because you'll, you and I will run into each other. I know your cell phone. I, you know, people, people meet up with you. You just said you were in Flagstaff over the weekend. So that's a connection there that DC is just so far from anymore. So we have to rely on the legislature as that backstop going forward. So I, I, I hope you'll continue to do that, Senator. I And I thank you, and I want to be on your show uh, frequently. And this is to also tell everyone, I am running to be reelected as your state senator. And I will make that firm announcement to you right as we speak. Okay. Um, I want to continue to serve. And you say to me, well, Wendy, um, Senator Rogers, that's great, but what about the lines that might be redrawn? understand all that i'm you know collecting signatures irrespective of that the lines will be uh redrawn and we won't know till next year the independent redistricting commission and how those will be but rest assured i am always your state senator and wherever the lines are redrawn i will run for re-election to be your state senator and i take care of people even if they're not in my district i think it's all going to work out and I don't know, but I don't think the lines will be redrawn that dramatically. Yeah, yeah, we'll um, see. That's a big... is my home. Yeah. And this is a... where I am to serve you. <laughs> redrawing those lines, it's a huge topic, and we're going to be watching that one closely because we know how that can go, especially on those congressional lines. But you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Senator Wendy Rogers running, rerunning for the – Arizona State Senate once again uh, or running for the second term so um, you know there's all kinds of speculation every election cycle about who's doing what and what's going on so you've cleared that up early and uh, and now people know so so good to hear that and Senator hey I appreciate the updates let's just get you on more uh, it's been a whirlwind <laughs> So we'll we'll schedule you in. We should get you on again every every couple of weeks so we can get some updates, especially as the bills fly through there. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. God bless everyone. All right, folks, that's it for today. Um, get this podcast. If you missed any of that interview, 
or anything from the 4 o'clock hour, go to talkwithjeff.com. Please sign up or subscribe to the podcast. Really appreciate that. You can look it up on Spotify and and YouTube and Google Podcasts and all those places. Go to talkwithjeff.com as well, talkwithjeff.com. Be back tomorrow at 4.06, another busy day. Have a great, safe night, and we'll see you soon.